I'll have accepted command. You can launch the aircraft when ready. The aircraft being able to fly in a straight line at 130 kilometers an hour allows you to get to every corner of the country in a very short, short amount of time. Drone is a small uh, equipment, but it is getting a critical uh, solution to someone dying somewhere. What was previously impossible became possible. My name is Praise Jigwanda. I work as a senior medical doctor at the Luke Commission Miracle Canvas Hospital. The senior medical team received a call and they alerted us to say there was a lady who had been beaten by a black member. We got to know about it as the Luke Commission uh, three hours down the line. And so we had to mobilize the team, get into an ambulance and try and rush down to Nklangan. Although we had an agreement with the clinic to say they could meet us along the way, we still didn't get a very good outcome and unfortunately the patient passed. My name is Simon Kutibiwa. I am the Director of Flight Safety Standards in the Eswatini Civil Aviation Authority. What came to mind when TLC proposed drone delivery in Eswatini is excitement. Uh, not from a perspective of technological development or sophistication within the, uh, the tech space, uh, but uh, excitement in terms of service delivery. When Lu Commission came up with the idea of drones, I had to think of the all the possible role players in the overall approval, the use, the monitoring. We had to come up with a detailed process whereby all these approvals would have to be conducted. My name is uh, Simiso Smelane. I'm one of four drone pilots that we have here at the Luke Commission. To become a remotely piloted certificate holder, you need to undergo um, a series of trainings and assessments that are um, done by the regulator. As the TLC team, we also had to undergo some training, which was intense. Our credibility lies in our effective implementation of uh, what we call the standards and recommended practices. The TLC team was part of the top 1% um, of those who under, undergone the RPC training uh, and assessments with the South African Civil Aviation Authority, which was not just a big achievement for TLC, but it was such a, a huge achievement for SOAD. My name is Martin Smelan. I'm the Chief Air Traffic Control and Station Rescue Officer uh, at the Swatin Civil Aviation Authority, based at King Swati, the Third International Airport. Within Swatin, we didn't have uh, regulations on managing drones and uh, unmanned traffic. Uh, so that was our first start. So we had to refine our regulations and we had to well, I refine our process and uh, application procedures for drone operators. My name is Aidan Bigger. I live in Sydney, Australia, and I'm head of operations at Kite Aero. The technology that TLC are using in Eswatini for their drone network comprises both an aircraft, which is called the Kite, and then an offboard software, which we call Axiom. The Kite is a 25 kilo powered lift platform, electrically powered with eight hover motors and two forward motors. And that aircraft goes alongside the Axiom software to, which is used to plan missions for piloting and maintenance and everything else that is required to operate a scalable and sustainable drone fleet. So in order to enable the life-saving deliveries with the kite, the first step is to plan a route. So normally whenever we go through a route, we have a couple of different criteria that we're working around. So one of those is the location that we're taking off from and also location that we're landing at. So if you have no concerns with the route, select approve, fill in a comment and select submit. The route looks good, I'm gonna approve it now. So we're ready to fly. Yes, we're ready to fly. Pilot command, the route is ready to fly. That route can be used over and over and can be in one of two types. It can either fly to the remote location and land, 
or if the location is unsuitable, it can fly over that location and drop the payload before flying back. When the time comes for that delivery, all that's required is to take the aircraft out of this room, complete a pre-flight inspection, load the route from the pilot station, and send the aircraft on its way. So before we do any operation, we need to make sure that we alert all stakeholders um, of our operations. And then when we're done with that, we need to make sure that we log it in Luvelo in the checklist that we have for our operation. When I've successfully submitted my checklist, then I move over to platform where I prepare the aircraft for flight. Please confirm that all pre-flight checks have been done on Kilo Alpha 127 and we are ready to take off. Affirmative, the aircraft is ready for flight. Uh, waiting on you, my pilot. Copy. So before we take off, I just need to make a radio call to alert any people who could be using the airspace of our presence and our intentions. Traffic in this Fogotro area, this is White Arpas Kilo Alpha 127, currently operating at the TLC Miracle Campus, one nautical mile southeast of Fogotro Riders Ranch. For the next eight minutes, next call when detail is complete, Kilo Alpha 127. GSO, we are almost ready to take off. Please confirm that the takeoff area is clear and that the airspace is clear for takeoff. Uh, affirmative, Mgoni. The airspace is clear and the takeoff area is clear. Please go ahead and take off the drone. Copy, going to launch now. Countdown commencing. Stand clear, stand clear, stand clear. Ten. Nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one, take off. The aircraft will follow the pre planned route, complete the mission, either landing or dropping, before returning to the hub. As a pilot, I have to keep my eyes on the screen, monitoring the performance and making sure that everything is within expected range. The mountainous nature of Eswatini presents an interesting challenge, which the kite is well suited to, with the climb performance that both of the pusher motors enable to allow us to fly more complex routes that are more direct, straight up the sides of you know, some of the hills and mountains in Eswatini, in addition to having the range that allows it to cover almost the entire country on a return flight. When we're adding a new site to the network, it involves one of us, one of the team here, visiting that site for what we call a site inspection. We need to make sure that we get a, uh, a flat piece of land that we will land and take off from and make sure that it is free from any obstructions for the first flight to that remote facility. We always make sure that we are present so that we can further train the local staff on how to receive and work with the drone safely and make sure that we maintain safety. So this is also our op opportunity to do some community engagement. This is a new technology in Eswatini. A well-performing aircraft is one that is maintained periodically, one that is checked for safety um, at regular intervals. As pilots, we are the custodians of safety. We need to make sure that all safety procedures are being followed, you know. And the drones have a maximum payload of four kilograms. We need to make sure that our hub operators um, are loading nothing more than four kilograms so that we operate safely. To manage air traffic on a day-to-day -day basis, we use a set of communication systems, navigation systems, and surveillance systems. When it comes to the loop commission, it was well organized because there are designated routes, which we are aware of. And also, the commission availed their monitoring system. They gave us access. 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 When the drone network was finally launched, it was 
so heartwarming. The launch of Eswatini's first medical drone network at the Luke Commission represents the best of partnerships. Today is a historic day for the health sector of the Kingdom of Eswatini, not just TLC. What we are observing here today is taking our health system to higher levels in terms of application of technology. That was the official announcement of this new innovation and this new uh, position and stride that we are taking in healthcare. Before I'm a traffic controller, I'm a SWATI. And before I'm a SWATI, I'm a, I have parents. So when I, when I saw this innovation and I saw how it works, I could imagine also even my parents, uh, at any given moment, they could benefit. Uh, they stay in the rural areas. So for me, it was, um, it was a sense of pride to say, wow, uh, Eswatini is on the right direction. And also uh, it was a sense of pride to say, um, I'm also somehow a beneficiary of this innovation. The healthcare system and delivery now has improved tremendously uh, because of the drones. One particular day when we had a client with a high level of, of blood glucose and we had no insulin to give to the client and the client was starting to be uh, to be unconscious so we're able to request from request insulin from local commission in order to inject the client and the client can stabilize so our process when we get a request from the medical team begins with the person making the request filling in that request in the drone application that is hosted in Luvelo. And that request will be received by us here at the Drone Operations Center and also received by the department that um, is hosting that commodity. It can be the pharmacy department, it can maybe also be the supply chain and logistics department. And then once those departments receive that request, it will then be processed and sent up to us quickly for us to package it safely and it will be loaded in the drone when it is ready to be sent out. When the clients receive the medication, they feel very happy because the drone has really helped them. When I see one of the Kite drones delivering life-saving medicine, that to me is really why I chose to be an engineer. Here we're talking of an operation that improves efficiency. To me, the most fulfilling thing about this operation is knowing that it has become a symbol of inclusion. People that were previously excluded to quality healthcare are now um, included because um, through this network we are now able to access remote areas that were previously underserved. In the case of emergencies, we try to chase a number, 10. That's the number of minutes between the receiving of a request to the time a drone takes off. We try to always make sure that we're trying to reduce this number as, as, as much as possible because we understand that every second and every minute counts. We are trained to see souls that can be lost if things go wrong. So working at the front line with this uh, technology as it is launched and as it is uh, going around now in Eswatini, I am super, super excited and I do realize and feel it every day to say I'm part of a great innovation and revolutionary work. Seeing it proven and demonstrated with hundreds of flights in Eswatini allows us to sort of have confidence to go elsewhere in Africa and deploy the same system. We have other countries like the US, Ghana, Rwanda, and Cote d'Ivoire who are taking giant leaps in using, in the use of drones in their medicals, in their medicals fee. So when Eswatini takes, takes a, a, a leap or as, as well in the use of drones in the medicals fee, that is a giant leap. The aircraft can be reliable, you can have a really strong software that supports it, but ultimately, you know, the success of a drone network comes down to not just the system you're using, but also the people that operate it and the, the training that you give to people on the ground and the community sensitization and the work with people like Eswaka and the regulators. That work has been absolutely spearheaded by TLC and for that I'm very grateful and you know I, I commend TLC for their work in 
creating and, and developing the ongoing success of this project. The partnership between Isaka and TLC and what it has delivered is world-class, period. <laughs>